Hi, don't touch that dial. This is Dave Flix, all Dave, all the time. And now the next episode of the FinTech Writers Workshop. Hope you enjoy it. Well, this was an interesting one. I had to come up with a 20 minute talk for Finnovate Asia. They asked me to talk about COVID and cashless. So, uh, you know, that, that's, you know, obviously interesting and a hot topic. And it's one of the keynotes. So I was very happy to be asked to do this. But, um, you know, I want to try and think of something interesting to say and not just say what everyone else is going to say about how, you know, the virus is accelerating the trend towards um, cashless and how contactless use is up no end in the UK and all that sort of thing. So uh, I tried to think of a specific agenda and I thought, well, um, I definitely want to learn more about doing presentations on video because they asked me to record the presentation. They didn't want to do it live over Zoom, partly because I think it would be like three o'clock in the morning for me or something, but also because I think, as, as I've discovered with a couple of other things I've done recently, can occasionally be a little unreliable if people are relying on internet connections so they wanted me to record something so that's good um, I wanted to say something about the big picture which for me isn't about contactless it's about contact free and um, you know pandas to my thing about app and pay not tap and pay but I wanted to finish with a with a my 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 really big point about what the transition to cashlessness means and and actually what it means is we need to have a strategy for it which we don't have so i was trying to think of a framework for the presentation and i was trying a couple of different things and i didn't want anything too cliched and i was thinking well what can i use to sort of illustrate what i think the real trend is and by complete coincidence uh while i was not working on the presentation one of the other things i was doing was was doing <laughs> <laughs> some questions for a pub quiz you know we have a weekly lockdown pub quiz at consult hyperion and i won last week so it was my turn to set the questions for this week and i happened to be looking up a couple of um questions and about beer i was just trying to think well, what would be interesting things to have questions about and then i suddenly thought what a great idea to illustrate the trends so i decided to talk about beer now um <laughs> not just drinking beer i mean that was a good point but using buying beer to illustrate the changing trends and it reminded me this all started way back in 2011 with my good friend joe devana we were this is in in cambridge and we were in a bar messing around with some I had some what were then you know quite revolutionary new contactless tchotchkes I had a sticker on the back of my phone which I loved by the way I thought that was great and I had a contactless card and anyway we decided to have a race to see whether contactless was bigger than quicker than cash and, and well you'll have to look at the video to see what actually happened but but I lost but anyway but the point is you know I'd been buying beer with stickers and watches and things like that so that took me on to 2012 where we persuaded our local pub to install a contactless terminal for two reasons really I pestered Kath the landlady to death about this but it's to first of all because we wanted to muck about playing with contactless stuff in the pub which was <laughs> I mean why not it was just across the road from our office and it was kind of useful to have a working live POS terminal in there so you could go over the road with things you were working on this is one of the mobile phone applications there that was with orange and uh, you know various other things and try them out but also because of course we quite often took clients to the pub for lunch and we wanted to show them stuff as well so you know and the the point is when the pub went contactless that was big enough news that it made the local newspaper um, you know my my how times have changed so we go on a couple of years and there I am at the iPub. I don't know if it was the first iPub in London, but certainly one of the first. So we went off to the to the iPub, which had contactless readers built into the table. 
so you could you could pay at the table and you had iPads to order drinks there were beer taps on the table as well which is quite cute and you could order food and drink by and it was fun and we had a really good time there and I wrote a blog post about it at the time and it's interesting reading it now because in the blog post I did I did finish by kind of saying well the thing I noticed was that everybody in the pub had a smartphone so why not just use the smartphone what's the point of the iPad and you know and and at that time we were advising a you know a few different people I don't want to talk about specific projects but I had this thing about it's going to be app and pay not tap and pay and retailers really should spend more time working on their own apps because this is all to be capturing data and and then this later became you know the the stuff about which everybody knows now I think which is about managing the change from check out to check in it, there's no point having something where the cut you know the the retailer only knows who you are when you're checking out so in 2017 one of the pubs did this is Weatherspoons, which I think is I should have gone and looked this up really I think it's the biggest pub chain in England and Weatherspoons introduced an app now actually at this point I had kind of an interesting experience because I I've never been to Weatherspoons, uh, and so I've never used the app I don't know what's so I needed to find somebody who'd actually been to Weatherspoons and used the app. So by coincidence, I happened to have one of them in the house at the time, i.e. my son. So I interviewed him about the app and I put that into the presentation. And of course, he said, oh, well, him and his friends use the app all the time. You know, they wouldn't pay any other way. And it's brilliant. And, you know, why doesn't everything work like this, essentially? So it's a pretty ringing endorsement. And that brings us to now. By the way. I also found out some fantastic I was googling examples of using the Weatherspoons app actually because I was looking for a picture of it and what I found instead was a really interesting set of stories this is a subculture completely unknown to me one of the things of course with the app is you can buy drinks for people in any pub not not just the one you're in in fact you don't even have to be in the pub you can do it from home so so there's a thing about you know people buying their uh, you know their boyfriends and girlfriends drinks and all this sort of thing and so I google this because I'm just curious about it because it seems interesting to me because I'm interested in payments and I find this fantastic story in the Daily Mirror about how dominatrices are getting their male slaves to buy drinks for them in Weatherspoons. I mean it's obviously there are classier dominatrices I suppose in other parts of the world but I just thought it's a fantastically English story anyway put that to one side for the moment it's in the Daily Mirror if you want to go and look at it which brings us to now and while I'm writing the presentation I see all of this stuff about the government wants pubs to reopen one of the things they you know one of the things the pubs can do to to have the kind of hygiene and social digital or something is basically get people to use apps so we've gone from buying drinks with contactless cards and thinking that was fun to a point where you know it's it's not mandatory but it might as well be that uh, pubs have to use apps and so I thought that makes like an interesting story about where we're going we're not going to contactless we're going to contact free that kind of harmonizes the situation in Europe and Asia where you know smartphones and QR codes are the order of the day as it is and enables me to make a couple of points about this shift to check in and the strategic options available to different stakeholders about supporting that transition and, and making it effective um, so then I and so then my point of course is the virus hasn't caused us to go contactless it's caused us to go contact free what does that mean it means it's accelerated the trend to cashlessness you you know you can all look at the figures certainly in the UK the use of caps cash is collapsing which of course means that it doesn't make sense to me to spend money on the cash infrastructure it, it would make more sense to spend money helping people to move away from it and that made me think that we need an overall strategy for cashlessness and then I remembered well I'd done this cashless manifesto for money 2020 Europe back in 2017 so what I then did was I went back to the original blog posts about the bar about the pub about app and pay and I pulled out a few bits of those because I thought that would make an interesting blog post and then I went back to the manifesto for contactless uh, the manifesto for cashlessness from 2017 which is in my book before Babylon beyond Bitcoin 
just thought I'd mention that. And what I'd done there was I'd taken this catalogue of issues around the transition to cashlessness and I'd organised them into these kind of four areas. And my idea essentially was to form a national strategy around it. We need to bring experts in these four areas together to connect the dots and look at all the different issues. And that would be an organised way of helping us to develop this this national strategy. I think it's a pretty good structure and I, I kind of stand by it. So that meant I could finish on a big point. And anyway, that was how I came to... <laughs> That was how I came to use beer as my central narrative for uh, Finnovate Asia. Well, that was the FinTech Writers Workshop. Um, I hope it was helpful to you in some way. Please keep the feedback coming, good and bad. I, I'm quite serious about thinking of ways to improve it. And uh, if you have any kind of specific areas you want me to cover in the future, just drop me a note. See you soon.